Go. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Amy Boswinkle with Connections Restored TV, an affiliate of the Bill and Callie Show Network. This is episode six, and I am so excited to share to, to the audience today a very special guest expert speaker, someone that I truly adore and love with all of my heart. I do believe we entered one another's world right around a year ago. And although we just kind of floated in and out of one another's life at that time, just a few short months later, we made a greater connection and we have uh, become incredibly good friends, someone I consider a sister, someone who I uh, love and adore very much. And I can't wait to share with all of you. My guest today, her name is Kara Gilsonen. Let me tell you guys a little bit about Kara and then I'll get I'll give you guys an opportunity to get to know Kara because I know that you guys are just going to fall in love with her the same way that I have. She's just an exceptional part of my life. Kara is an intuitive life and soul coach specializing in spiritual and conscious awakening. She is a wife and mother of four and lives in a small rustic town in central New York. Kara's work is very powerful for those that most likely consider themselves doing okay. They may understand the power of positive thinking. They've heard of the benefits of things like meditation, yoga, and thinking positive, and maybe even try to do it sometimes. They may also like and understand that our thoughts create our reality, but they struggle to figure out how to actually manifest the life they want. Most importantly, though, there's an emptiness, like something's missing, and they can feel this deep calling in their soul that there's more. They just aren't sure what to do or how to access it. And if they were being really honest with themselves, they'd admit that this desire for something more is becoming more uncomfortable, painful even, and some days life just feels heavy and things will never change. Kara helps her clients to reconnect with their heart and soul so they can remember who they truly are. And then she helps clients rewire their minds, heal their hearts by releasing painful emotions from the past, and connect deeper with their soul's calling so they can finally get clear on why they are here, what they want out of life, and how to create it. Kara overcame her own battle with depression by healing herself physically, mentally, and emotionally, but it was her spiritual healing that was the missing piece the glue that brought all the other pieces together. And she finally found the truth of who she was and who she was capable of becoming. And it is her mission to bring that feeling of coming home to her clients. Kara also has a master's in counseling services, certifications in health and wellness, as well as life coaching, and is also a, a Reiki practitioner. So without further ado, friends, I really am so honored and so blessed to call uh, uh, to call Kara my friend, and I would like to introduce all of you to, uh, to her right now. Kara, would you mind letting us know a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Well, thank you so much, Amy. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for having me on today, and thank you for all of those incredibly kind words. And uh, it's interesting, you said about a year ago, and, and it is just about a year ago, around this time that we did meet and our paths crossed. And I do believe there was a divine intervention there that we are meant to be in each other's lives. And I consider you a sister as well um, and love you dearly. Um, so thank you for having me on. And thank you to the, the Bill and Kelly show as well for you know everything that they're doing to create impact in the world. I think it's amazing. So. I am a life and soul uh, intuitive coach, and I have done a few diff. I've dabbled in a few different areas in coaching. I started with health and wellness, then I went into life coaching, and then I just most recently transitioned my life coaching into specializing in the conscious and spiritual awakening coaching. And so, for some people, they might be like, "Well, what is what does that even mean?" And it's interesting that I can go back and look at the coaching I've been doing over the course of all of those different areas. And to be honest the content didn't really change all that much. What I found was at the root of, you know, when it was health and wellness, the root of why people weren't losing weight didn't really have to do as much with the food and the diet and the exercise. You know, I helped my clients. I had several clients that lost, I'd never gotten a final number, but I, if I did guess between like 60 and hundred pounds and it's been years. So they kept that weight off, but we didn't spend our time talking about diet and exercise. We talked about, you know, 
them reconnecting with themselves and who they were and, and standing up for themselves and having boundaries and self-care and those kinds of things. So my work has always kind of been more geared towards that reconnecting with the self. And then as it transitioned over time, I just started to realize and through doing my own healing, because you know, as, as we're like one of the most fortunate, you know, professions in the world that as we help our clients, we also get to help ourselves because we have to do the work before we can walk them through it. So doing my own work, I had come to a place where I had done a lot of, you know, I had healed myself physically. I'd healed those physical symptoms of that severe depression that I had back when I was 13, uh, around the age of 22. And then for another 10 to 15 years, I healed myself emotionally and mentally doing a lot of the work that I do with my clients, which is also the part that I call the conscious awakening piece. So that's where we're waking up to realize all of the, the programming that's kind of been running in the background in our subconscious brain and, you know, creating these rules and boxes and limiting beliefs about, you know, what is the world like? What are we capable of? And I teach my clients how that really kind of can create the lens through which we view the world and we have the power to change that. So I was doing all of that work and then I was teaching my clients those things, that conscious awakening piece of like waking up to the fact that like, wow, I really do have a lot more power to create change than I ever thought possible. And then I kind of got stuck and that's actually when I met Amy. Um, I was, I had kind of gotten to a place where I, I didn't understand what was wrong. I, I was helping my clients, but I felt empty inside. I just felt like there was something more and I found myself searching and just feeling like there's, there's more, there's more, there's gotta be more. And it was through working with Amy that I had that kind of spiritual awakening piece where, you know, spiritual awakening to me is that you know, we consciously awaken to maybe the, the prison that our own mind has created for us in our lives. And we wait, awaken to that and, and all of the power we have there. But then there's that like second awakening of the spirit of who are we even beyond our mind, even beyond our ego, you know, as a soul, as a person, who are we outside of these bodies? And it was that that higher perspective that really just opened my eyes and gave me so much more peace and clarity in, in many different areas of my life. And so that was the piece that I recently transitioned into and said, I want to bring this piece to my clients. And so I decided to say I'm specializing in the conscious and spiritual awakening. So my message can really be heard by those that are looking for that something more. Oh, my goodness, Kara. That is just, it's so powerful just to listen the space that you were once in and the journey that you took, not only for yourself, in, in bridging the gap between that physical awareness of what was going on with you um, with depression and then helping to walk your clients through that space of healing their health, sometimes with weight, but that what you found in growing yourself and, and watching your clients grow and expand, that there was this missing link between uh, the physical and the soul. And that in your own search where you kind of felt that you had arrived again at the space of emptiness within you, you were guided to someone who was able to bridge the gap for you. And in exchange and in return, you were able to bridge the gap for your clients in this area as well. And I just, I find that so powerful. Um, and it's, it is such a, a really unique piece to bring to health and healing and wholeness. So I'm curious if you don't mind sharing with us how that has expanded your work with your clients and what do you find their results are like now? Yeah, so it's, it's so interesting. The, I would say if I look back, the clients that I was calling to before, they needed exactly what I could give them. So when I was doing the health and wellness, I had a certain level of awareness around how how we think can have an effect on our results and what the, and the way we experience the world and, and what we think we're capable of doing, right? And so all of that kind of relates to our happiness. Like, do we feel free? Do we feel capable? Do we feel, or do we feel like we're victims of our circumstances? So, you know, the people I was working with, they would have those kind of awakenings and it was beautiful, but I could only take them so far. And then as my work progressed, I, I saw uh, myself trying to bring the spiritual aspect to the coaching before I'd even had 
my own kind of spiritual awakening. So it was already stirring within me. And I saw how that helped my clients to like wake up more to their power, to their purpose, to these things about themselves that they'd kind of been either hiding or forgotten or had just set aside because because of life, because life gets busy. I work with a lot of moms, even the women that weren't moms, it, you you know, um, it's, it seems to either be like either mom or career. So they were keeping themselves busy with something, but they weren't taking care of themselves. They weren't coming into their own uh, reconnecting with who they are on a heart and a soul level and giving themselves that deep self care, that self love, um, all of those pieces. So as I brought more of that into it and just seeing them open up and kind of blossoming into more of who they are. And then most recently transitioning into bringing that spiritual awakening piece. Now, all of a sudden I saw, um, you know, I have a, a, a beautiful client. She had lost her son in a tragic accident four months before we met. And through our work together, just within three weeks, she was able to, she calls it her spiritual awakening. And and she was just able to see everything that had happened in her whole entire life because she'd had quite a dynamic life. Um, and to see everything as if it had all, was all meant to be, it was all meant to be. And so that to me is amazing when I can see somebody that, maybe before was depressed or anxious or had gone through something tragic, you know, tragic loss or, you know, um, uh, trauma, you know, growing up, things like that. Those are the things that I can see my clients overcoming now in a way, like it's not that they weren't getting help before with the conscious awakening and, and, and reclaiming their power and reconnecting with themselves, but bringing that, that higher perspective that, that there is something more, that there's something beautiful out there that's orchestrating. There's this divine orchestration of everything that's happening and we can't always see it you know, from our human perspective, but when we connect to that part of us and we all have that ability to connect with that part of us inside, and once we reestablish that connection, which I believe I, I help my clients do mostly by, I really focus a lot on the self-love, coming into yourself. Who are you caring for yourself? I do a lot of extreme self-care challenges and going beyond self-care in, in my groups and stuff, because I think that that piece of just coming in and, and checking in with yourself and, and reconnecting with yourself creates that greater awareness. And once we have that connection to that higher perspective of our soul, we can see things in our lives from a different vantage point and it gives us so it, it makes us feel so empowered mm. to overcome things that before just felt like they were impossible like like things could never change or we could never feel better it's that's so amazing and i love that piece that you brought to this conversation kara that um you know happiness and feeling empowered and connecting self-love and self-care to the health aspect, right? I, I, I think that sometimes people don't understand that there really is a direct correlation between health and those, what we call like the low vibrational feelings like grief and depression and pain and anxiety when we feel stuck in a certain space because things in life aren't really working out the way that we want them to. And that there is a link, right, for their health through connecting to this higher vibrational energy of happiness, empowerment, self-love, and, and self-care. Um, can you speak to us a little bit more about that connection that you found that was so powerful, whether that's for yourself and or your clients? Sure. Um, I can speak, you know, for myself uh, other than having, you know, going through that experience with depression, I, uh, I, my husband and I, we got married and we ended up having four kids in five years. And it was completely not, not exactly planned to be that way. We said, let's have two kids. We don't want to outnumber ourselves. And our second pregnancy resulted in twins. And then we had a surprise. And I say, he's the greatest blessing that I never knew I needed, but he was a surprise nonetheless. And one that came less than two years after having twins. So I had four kids in five years and, and, I, and I wasn't the kind of person that really wanted the big family. It was very overwhelming for me. Uh, um, several years in a row of getting maybe four hours of sleep a night, not consecutively, not taking care of myself, not eating well. And on top of that, I had chosen, I'd gone to school and, and gotten a master's degree in counseling services. And then um, within, I think it was like six months later, we got unexpectedly pregnant with my first as well. And so I thought, okay, I'll stay home. 
at the time, there was a lot of other things going on in my mind as to what I'm, who I was capable of becoming. So this was kind of an excuse for me of like, okay, I don't have to push myself to go out into the, the world of professionalism yet. I'll stay home with my son. And then once we had the other kids, I ended up being a stay-at-home mom for 10 years. So I think there was a part of me also that was just kind of emotionally and mentally struggling. And at a soul level, I knew I was meant to be doing more, but I just didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. So all of that compiled to, I ended up with um, adrenal fatigue. I ended up being quite nutrient deficient. I had um, um, inflamed uh, gut, what's the word? Um, Oh. Leaky gut, leaky gut. Yeah, I was <laughs> um, so like, digestive issues, and I was I was to the point where like there were periods of the day where I'm supposed to be watching four kids, and I couldn't even keep my eyes open. I couldn't even get up off the couch. I was very depleted, you know, nutritionally and health wise. And so at that point, I said I have to do something. I started seeing a naturopath, and it was and it's so funny. That you, I tell the story now, and I remember on the way to my appointment. It was like one of the first times, not one of the first times, but one of the few times that I was getting away from the kids because it was I was always home with the kids. My husband worked a lot and I was driving in the car and I was listening to I accidentally found a Christian rock station, which I never listened to Christian music. But there was this really empowering song on about this being your time or something. And I just like fell in love with it. And I had like this, you know, full body chills of like, this is my time. And from that moment on, it was like I made this decision in my mind that I was going to. I was going to learn to love myself, to take care of myself, to, you know, reconnect with myself. And so that's a lot of the work that I turned around and brought to my clients because it was through that and gaining my health back and recognizing how, you know, when we don't love ourselves or, or think we're good enough or important enough or worthy, we put our health on the back burner, especially I think as women, I, I know men do this too. Um, but that was a huge piece for me to overcome and to say, you know what, I, I matter. I, I need to take care of myself and I need to take care of myself first and then I can take care of everybody else. So yeah, it's very powerful, that connection between, and it was, and, and, you know, to connect that, how are you, how are you caring for yourself physically and linking that to this, this, um, you know, uh, wound in our soul that we're not good enough or we're not worthy enough you know that connection piece and you can take it right down the line of the the limiting beliefs and the, the mental you know beliefs that we have around that and then the emotions that stem from that and then when we it will eventually show up in our physical bodies or, or our physical lives one way or the other to see you know that there is something there that needs to be changed and so that's something I help my clients to see is they usually come to me with the physical, either something physical in their life that, that's manifested that they can see this, that's something that's not working or something physical in their body. And I can help them to kind of retrace the steps of where is this coming from? Because it is all interconnected and you can trace it all back. And once you, you know, you can treat it on the outside, like when I treated my depression and I treated those symptoms and it was, and it was so, such a relief to be feeling better physically, but if I hadn't gone on to do the mental and the emotional and then eventually the soul work, I probably would have found myself right back there, you know, or worse. So, you know, we have to look at what's happening on the outside, but we have to trace it back and we have to treat it at the root if we want to create true, sustainable, lasting change. Kara, that is so powerful. I mean, Gosh, Kara, the amount of innate intelligence in you, number one, you have so much educational experience having a master's degree in counseling, uh, counseling services for psychology. Uh, you have become a Reiki practitioner. You have life coaching. You have health coaching skills, but compound that also and, and, and add into that your personal life experiences and the journey that it took for you to arrive to the person that you are today. And I could definitely feel the power. I could, I felt like I was sitting right next to you in the car on the way to that naturopath, um, listening to that song that just like it clicked everything into you where you said, and I think this is really powerful friends for us all. Uh, this really sat with me when Kara said it, that I matter. I matter. 
right? Coming to that space of arriving where you're making this really powerful decision that you matter and that you're willing to go to any length to make the change around what's going on in your life that feels so painful. And that you were able to connect the dots in spaces where maybe you weren't given information, right? Being able to take what you learned um, and perhaps were, was di were diagnosed with, you know, depression and, and anxiety and understanding that, um, but taking and connecting the dots in this way of understanding that you matter and that the dots that were missing were happiness and empowerment and self-love and self-care. And during this time that we are all walking through on our planet, this pandemic that has affected each of us in a very unique way. I'm curious if you have something that you might be able to share with us, some tool, um, some piece of wisdom, something that you can share with us um, so that we can remember how much we matter, Kara? Sure. Um, and I love how you said everyone is experiencing this in their own unique way because I, I truly believe that and I talk about that a lot in my groups. And yet I believe we are also each experience, experiencing it exactly as we are meant to and need to. And I think sometimes that might be hard to hear, especially if something's going on that we don't like, maybe we lost our job or you know something, you know, it's, it's affecting us deeply. But I do believe that there are gifts in our experience, especially right now, that is showing us where we still have room to grow in order to be happier in our lives and to reach more of our potential. So I, I just love that you said that. Um, there is, I, I use a lot of tools in my coaching. I use EFT tapping. I teach clients to process emotions, but something I've been using a lot just recently, uh, because with, you know, everything that's going on, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of anxiousness and fear. And sometimes it's rational. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just when we don't know what's what's coming or what's going to happen or how to plan for things, you know, it kind of makes our, our brain go a little wonky. So something that I've been using a lot, and at first it wasn't even a tool. I would just tell my clients to take a big giant step back. And I've recently been using it so much that I'm like, I'm just going to, you know, make this a tool that I actually use. And so what I tell them to do is to take that big giant step back and try to connect to. And so, it, you know, if they, if, if, if you are, you want to try to just connect to you as, as much as you can connect to you, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and just try to connect into your heart and bring your, and bring your energy and your focus inside your body and try to be present with yourself in the moment and connect with that part of you, whether you're aware of that part or not, but there is a part of you that knows that everything is okay, even when it doesn't look like everything is okay. And so we're just trying to connect to that piece of us. And then in that moment, take a big giant step back. Is it possible that from some greater perspective that maybe is even beyond what our human brains can comprehend and understand in this moment, that this is okay, that everything is okay. Now, there's a lot of times where we get really caught up in the details of what's going on and the details of what we're getting anxious about. You know, I know as a mom with my kids, I, I can get really caught up in the little details of things. So this tool really helps me to kind of like give myself a pause and be like, okay, you know what, this is not that important right in this moment. I can just step away from this and push the easy button and, and go take a breather or go take a break, let them take a break. So it really helps in these little day-to-day -day things. But I think with the big things too, if we can try to get into that practice of like connecting with that higher part of us that knows that everything is okay, we might not be able to have the, the rational thoughts to support that. But if we could at least connect to a few moments of peace to be like, Maybe it's just possible that, you know, somebody is driving the bus, that there really is a divine purpose for everything that's happening and just try to connect to that part of us that I believe knows that that's true and bring ourselves a little comfort when we just don't know, you know, there's no way for our human brains to know other than to try to connect to that higher part of us. Oh, that is really powerful, Kara. Thank you so much for sharing that with the audience, friends. Uh, I think that that's a really powerful tool and I know uh, I'm going to be, I'm definitely going to be practicing that, Kara. That's a tool that I 
ha I haven't been, it hasn't come into my awareness and I agree with you, everything arrives exactly when it's supposed to. So I know that I'm gonna be utilizing that tool as well, friends. It sounds incredibly powerful to, you know, just, we are okay, right? We are, like if we just take that deep breath in, we are okay and then we take that step back. So I can't wait to practice that. Thank you for, for making us all aware and, and gifting us that blessing, Kara. That was very powerful um, from your toolbox. I'm curious if you wouldn't mind sharing those of the uh, those of us watching the video right now, those of you friends in the audience right now, if you guys are interested in connecting with Kara, if you wouldn't mind letting us know where we can find you. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a business Facebook page. It's called Kara's Transformational Coaching. And I also have a private Facebook group called Awakening with Kara. And uh, actually, just last week, I did a masterclass in there, an awakening masterclass, right? Take you through my whole uh, five-step process that I use in my private coaching to help people through their conscious and spiritual awakening. So it's kind of neat. And I do, you know, lots of videos and support and resources in there. So those are two places on Facebook you can reach me. And I also have a website. It's www.karaslifecoaching.com. I haven't updated it since I've transitioned into the spiritual coaching, but you can absolutely connect with me there. So, and there's, there's good information on there too, and some blog articles. Perfect. Uh, friends, I highly encourage you guys to join Kara's group if for no other reason to watch that masterclass she did last week. It's Awakening with Kara here on Facebook. It was very powerful very powerful. And I really do believe that if you got anything out of Kira's message today, which I believe you all did, there was a piece in it for all of us. Um, please take the time to go and watch that video because uh, the depth of Kara's heart, the depth of Kara's innate intelligence as a high vibrational being on this planet um, and what she is here to help others with connect their health to their wholeness through their spiritual awakening um, is, is incredibly powerful. And like I said, friends, I can't speak highly enough of Kara. She is a true joy in my life. And please make sure um, if to uh, like and follow her business page, that's Kara's Transformational Coaching. And again, her, her Facebook group is Awakening with Kara. Kara, thank you again so much for sharing all of your um, wisdom with us today. I know that I've truly enjoyed spending the last uh, 20, 25 minutes with you. I was curious, do you have one last piece of information or one last piece of wisdom that you would like to leave the audience with today? I know I'm putting you on the spot. This isn't <laughs> something that, that, I, that I may be aware of, but is there one little nugget of information or piece of wisdom you would like to share with the audience before we leave? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this, it's funny you asked me this, this actually came to me the other day and I didn't, I didn't have a place to use it. So I'm going to use it here. Just love yourself. It's time. There's no reason not to just start doing it. And if you, and I, it's, and I know that sometimes saying love yourself can sound like impossible or, or like your brain can't even comprehend what it means. Cause I was there. I used to I used to hate myself. I hated myself when I had depression. So I know that there's places we can be where that doesn't even seem like, I don't even know how to do that. So what I say to people then is just try to be open to getting to know yourself and then maybe liking yourself, you know, try looking at your reflection in the mirror and, and seeing yourself with compassion. If, if you can't look at yourself with love yet to start with, with openness, with curiosity, with compassion, uh, open the door to that relationship with yourself because you, your relationship with yourself is the most powerful thing you will have in this entire life. So start loving yourself and wherever that journey starts for you, start there. Thank you so much, Kara. I, Kara said it best, friends, didn't she? Just love yourself. If you found value in today's video, friends, we would really appreciate you sharing this message with your audience only because the desire of my heart, the desire of Kara's heart, the desire of the Bill and Callie Show Network is to create a greater impact on this planet. To let people out in the audience know 
that if there is anyone that you know that is suffering, that there are people out in this world who actually really do care and love you, maybe even if you haven't met them before, and that there is a place that you can go and reach out to where your voice can be heard. So please, friends, don't be afraid to reach out to Kara if her message spoke to you today. Uh, don't be afraid to um, reach out to uh, the Bill and Callie Show Network if you find you know, they share all sorts of information uh, about uh, resources that are available in Northwest Indiana and that space is growing, or even to me, Amy Boswinkle at Connections Restored TV. Thank you so much today for your, friend, for your time today, friends. We really appreciate you being here with us, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. This episode of The Bill and Callie Show is brought to you by Executive Suite Squared by ATG, offering private and shared office space with 24-7 secured access, three state-of-the-art conference rooms, shared lounge and cafe area, receptionist, printing center, and fiber optic internet access with Wi-Fi throughout. Conveniently located just south of 8094 at the Kennedy Avenue exit at 2901 Carlson Drive in Hammond, Indiana. For information on how you can become a member, go to executivesuites2.com or call 219-844-2901. Executive Suite Squared, home to the Bill and Callie Show.